What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and we're here with Carolyn Myers, CEO of Fendex Technologies. Pleasure to have you on today, Carolyn. How are you doing? Great. Thanks. It's good to be here. Yes, excited to be talking about the company and your unique story. So could you start by giving our audience a brief overview of Fendex Technologies and the mission that drives your company? Fendex Technologies has been around for about four years, and uh, we started the company because we we're interested in licensing technology out of McMaster University that is very unique. Essentially, it's technology that prevents things from sticking to it. So uh, McMaster has shown that it prevents bacteria, viruses, water, blood, and other organics from sticking to it. And the reason that uh, I was interested in it and why we started the company is because my background is pharmaceutical. I've worked in it in the infectious disease control space for many years. And it, infections caused by bacteria that um, thrive on surfaces is really di difficult to control. And many of them are antibiotic resistant. So I was looking at this technology as an application to protect high touch surfaces where these bugs thrive to help reduce the spread or the transmission of these bugs between, between people. So that's really what we're focused on. And our mission really at the end of the day is to create products like film sprays that can go on these surfaces with the idea of, 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 of being able to make lives safer. That really makes sense. So, you know, Fendex recently announced its fifth real world testing site for repel wrap film with new Vista Society. Can you tell us more about this film, its benefits and the significance of these testing sites? Yeah, for sure. As I said, um, you know, we're developing films and sprays and we can talk about the spray later, but our, our lead product is the film. And essentially what it is, is it's like taking the equivalent of like saran wrap. It, it's, it's actually, you know, polyolefin, but it's like saran wrap. And you basically layer on these nanoparticles and then you shrink it. And what you create is a surface that is essentially inert that nothing really sticks to. Um, and so as a consequence of that, our interest is in bugs like bacteria and viruses is that we have shown in, in McMaster's lab that can we can reduce the adhesion of those bugs by more than 98%, which means that less than 2% of the bugs actually adhere to the surface. And if there are very little bugs adhering to the surface, they can't be transmitted because they're not on that surface. So when we when we licensed the technology back in in early 2021, we went down the path of, de of, of developing the formulation <clears throat> for purposes of scale up and it, it, for roll to roll manufacturing, which is basically you have a roll of plastic, you it, you, it goes across them. Um, uh, uh, into another roll and, and it gets coated and then it gets rolled up again. And, and, and in that process, the nano coating is layered on top. So that's what we did over the two years to, to, to um, formulate the, the technology so that we could do automated roll to roll manufacturing, which we have achieved. We started it last fall. Um, we have confirmed that we can actually automate this process and we're now in what are called pilot manufacturing runs with the idea of uh, optimizing the manufacturing process to get our cost of goods down as low as possible um, so that we can we can um, sell this product for at prices that are reasonable to the potential end users. So once we have finished this process of the pilot manufacturing runs, we will then do beta testing. Um, and as you said, we've, we've now um, announced five different sites. And the whole idea behind the beta testing is that we have not done a lot of real world uh, performance testing of the film. So that's really what this is before we go into final commercial production. And, and what we're looking at are a number of different verticals. And, and so one of them that we're beta testing is, is a high-end restaurant in Toronto. The other one is, is an entertainment facility called El Macombo, which many people may know. It's been an, an established entertainment facility in Toronto for a long time. And we have two long-term memory care type facilities. One in, and both of them are in British Columbia. And then our, our fifth site is very different because we really want to test the film in real world stress conditions. And so it's actually going to go on Dragonflies, they're, they're an Aztec listed company, on their drone boxes that carry medicines. 
and they'll we'll do test runs with them so that they truly are being subject to major stressors, which is wind, um, you know, rain, whatever else when they're in flight. So those are the five sites that we have identified across a number of different verticals. And the, they're all areas that we do plan to target when we bring the product to market. Once we've completed this beta testing, and by the way, we're gonna be announcing more, uh, then, and we've confirmed that the films maintain their performance, we'll then move into commercial production with the idea of being ready to launch in the Canadian market, hopefully in the first half of 2025. Exciting times ahead. So now let's talk a little bit about market expansion. So Fendex recently commenced trading on Germany's Tradegate Exchange. What does this expansion mean for your company and its investors? And how do you see it impacting your market presence in Europe? Well, I have to say we're pretty excited to have gotten on Tradegate um, because it's it's not the easiest exchange to get on. So we're very excited that we're on it. And really what it offers is uh, us, you know, broaden investor base and, um, you know, their ability to be able to trade shares at a low transaction cost. So it really, it really expands that opportunity beyond when we, we were just on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. So we're pretty, pretty happy to, to have um, um, been successful in getting listed on Tradegate. And of course, we're on the OTCQB and, uh, and the CSE uh, as well. That's great. Congratulations. So, so your team has been working on a new spray nano coating that uses AI and sensors to detect contamination. Can you share more details about this technology and how it might revolutionize the way we handle surface contamination? So there's two things there, and both of them are exciting. The one is a spray that essentially is the equivalent of the film in that when you spray it or apply it to a surface, it creates the exact same film that repel wrap film does. And just so you know, repel wrap film, it, it, because it repels or things can adhere to it, um, it's instantly effective and continually effective. So that's the key thing about our surface. And, but a film, you, you were to have an adhesive backing on it and you stick it onto a high touch surface. With the spray, you, you actually apply it, spray it, or you can use a cloth and put it on the surface. It creates the same film, which provides instant and continuous um, uh, protection. It's a little bit earlier in development, the spray. Um, we're still in the formulation phase. Once we complete the formulation phase, we will then uh, transfer it to uh, um, our, our nanoparticles partner, who we sign a master services agreement, who will actually do the scale up work for us of that spray. But what I like about it is that you can imagine a film can go on certain surfaces, a spray can go on essentially any form factor, whether it's a door handle, taps, you name it. So in my opinion, it, it has the potential to be, to have many more applications, but, but also, you know, I could see it being very much a consumer product as well because you can spray anything, right? So I, I potentially could be a game changer if we're able to get it to commercial production. The other piece you mentioned is on the AI and the detection. That's, that's um, an extension of the spray where we've actually added um, colored, colored nanoparticles, or I should just say colored chemistry to it, so that when you spray it on, on a surface, you, it will change color in the presence of, of uh, contamination, of bacterial contamination. So you'll know if, some, if there's bacteria on a surface or not. And the AI component is really to, you, you, can, you, you can see the results on your, on your phone, your mobile phone or on your computer will tell you or confirm whether it truly is bacteria or if it's something else. So, you know, it's, it's very much fine tuned to um, confirm whether it's bacteria. And, and so we just uh, announced that recently and we're planning to continue to develop it as well. Again, it's fairly early, but I'm pretty excited about both these opportunities. Yeah, that's definitely very exciting. So with all these exciting developments, what can investors and stakeholders expect from Fendex Technologies in the coming year? Are there any major projects or milestones on the horizon that you're particularly excited about? Yeah, well, there's a few. The first one is the film. Uh, as I mentioned, we're we're hoping that as long as everything goes as planned, 
that we could have a commercial product ready for introduction into Canada in the first half of 2025, and therefore potentially becoming revenue um, a revenue generating company. Um, as it relates to the spray, and then I should also say with the film, we would then move into um, introducing into the US market, which as we know is a very sizable market, relatively speaking. And that, that, that I'm hoping we can do in the second half of 2025 or into early 2026, uh, depending on how things progress. As it relates to the spray, as I mentioned, um, we are in the formulation phase. Once we get to scale up, the scale up won't be near as difficult as was with the film because we actually had to take a formulation that was essentially manually made in the lab and it took a long time to make the film to then being able to transcribe that or transfer that to a world to world manufacturer who can, who can now coat thousands of feet of film in literally minutes. Um, so that's a huge, huge milestone. But with the spray, you're talking about nanoparticles that are in suspension. So you've got a liter of suspension. We need to take that and in essence, make it to 10 liters. So while it's still not um, smooth necessarily, it's much easier than trying to reformulate something to totally change how you automate its production. So I anticipate that with the spray, we could be coming to market much sooner than the time it has taken us with the film. And then, uh, which, which potentially is in you know late 2025, early 2026. The and then we have one other project that we're working on, and it's coding catheters with our nanotechnology. And for the audience, you may know that um, Foley catheters, which are catheters you put into your bladder, they are prone to causing infections in the bladder, which can actually go systemic or throughout your body and create real problems of many people, especially if you're older, elderly, or if you're immunocompromised, it could be life-threatening for you. And you know, many of these infections are actually easy to manage, but it's very difficult to do because you know, you're, it's all about touch and surfaces, et cetera. So what we're doing is we're coding catheters. This is very early, we're in prototype development, but what we've shown, what we've shown so far at McMaster is that we, on these coded um, plastics, we can actually reduce bacterial adhesion significantly, just like with our film and our spray, but we also can reduce blood clot formation on these surfaces. And there are many catheters, like central venous catheters, that are also predisposed to um, getting blood clots at the end of them, which is a real problem in trying to manage it. So. We're early stage, but the idea is to get the prototype developed and then move into a proof of concept study to show that we actually can reduce infection rates, blood clot rates. Once we've completed that, which hopefully will be the end of this year and maybe you know the first quarter of next year, then the idea would be to license it to um, and, and work with a catheter partner to help de-risk the program. And in theory, if we do that, we could potentially be seeing some revenue in 2025, early 2026 related to upfronts and milestones. Just so you know, I have a very, very strong background in M&A and licensing. So I've done many of these deals in pharma. Um, and you know, this one, it just goes right down my path of experience. So it's um, that's a pretty exciting area for us as well. And last, we are looking at bringing in additional um, opportunities to the company to build out our intellectual property and just our general pipeline. Um, it's always a good idea to not put your eggs in one basket, but to diversify. And so we're in the process of exploring a number of different uh, potential opportunities to bring into the company. And hopefully in the next, in the next few months, we'll be in a position to be able to to announce some of those great things happening. Well, thank you for all the information, Carolyn. It's been a pleasure and I look forward to covering Fendex uh, and all the developments as it comes. Great, well, thanks so much. It's been fun. And let me just say that uh, for those that are viewing this, you can you can visit our, our website. It's www.fendextech.com. Um, and also we're on the CSE up under FNDX, so you can check us out there too.